I'm Ryan Urbanowitz, and welcome to part three of producing educational lecture videos using PowerPoint, OBS Studio, and Adobe Premiere Pro. In this video, we're going to be focusing on recording with OBS Studio. Here's a quick review of the videos included in this series. In our last video, we discussed hardware and software for recording and editing. So again, here's an overview of the entire production pipeline. The next set of slides are gonna focus just on recording using OBS Studio and everything that goes into it. I'm gonna focus on my own production pipeline and the steps that I take. So in this case, we're gonna use OBS Studio to set up capturing our different input sources. And then the only additional processing step we're gonna add is to remove the background in our webcam. However, you could also set up OBS Studio to adjust your audio quality before you start recording. All right, so first up, how do we install OBS Studio? You can download the software using this link. Also, if you want to remove the background in your webcam footage, you'll want to download this additional plugin for OBS Studio. This is something I recommend you install, whether or not you plan to use a green screen. For specific instructions on downloading and installing this plugin, please check out this other YouTube video. Now let's take a high level look at all the elements involved in recording in OBS Studio. I'm going to assume you've already installed OBS Studio as well as the background removal plugin. Now with OBS Studio open, you're going to create a new profile. This allows you to create custom capture settings for different kinds of projects. Here you're going to be setting up the capture resolution as well as the frames per second of your canvas or the backdrop on which you're recording. Next, you're going to be adding your sources, in this case, PowerPoint, your webcam, and a microphone. Next, you're going to arrange your video feeds, in this case, PowerPoint and your webcam, on your canvas. Next, you're going to check your microphone and audio mixer settings. Then you'll be adding your background removal filter to your webcam source. This is optional, but again, I recommend it. And lastly, perform a recording test. This is akin to the old adage, measure twice, cut once. The thing you want to avoid when using OBS Studio is to think you're all set up and then dive into recording an hour-long presentation, only to then look at the output and see that something was wrong, like perhaps your microphone wasn't turned on, or the video resolution you got out the other end was much lower than you expected. Next, I'm going to walk through these overview steps in more detail. Assuming you've already downloaded and installed OBS, you're going to open OBS and first create a new profile. Here's what OBS Studio looks like opened on your desktop. Up at the top, under the Profile tab, you're going to select New. Then you'll name your profile, and you'll have to indicate the usage information. In this case, we're recording, not streaming, so we want to optimize for recording. Let me take a quick second to talk about the base canvas resolution layout. We need to make sure that OBS is set up correctly to be able to capture our PowerPoint and webcam sources separately. Let's talk about some possible options. For my videos, I'm using this setup with a base canvas resolution of 2400 by 1080p. This is big enough to include screen capturing my PowerPoint presentation at 1920 by 1080p, as well as my webcam, which I've scaled down to 480 by 270. I chose this setup to preserve all of the PowerPoint slide, and this will give me control of where and when I place my webcam footage later on in editing. And I've also chosen to scale down my webcam footage because at no point in my talks do I intend for my webcam footage to take up the full screen. However, you could also set up your OBS Studio base canvas with a simpler 1920 by 1080 p format and simply permanently overlay your webcam in some corner of your PowerPoint presentation. This approach is simpler and is going to require less of your CPU. However, you can't move or manipulate your webcam footage when you get to editing. Then we have the beefiest option that I'm going to talk about. Here, our base canvas is being set to 3840 by 1080p. And this is because we're putting our PowerPoint slide at 1920 by 1080 next to a full webcam feed, also at 1920 by 1080p. This option is going to give you the most flexibility downstream in editing, in particular if you want at any point for your webcam to take up the full screen. But it's also going to take up the most CPU. Whatever you decide to go with, just make sure that your base canvas resolution is set to be able to handle all the input streams that you want to combine. In my case, I simultaneously want to capture my webcam separate from my PowerPoint slides. Next, we set our base or canvas resolution and frames per second. I'm going to go to File, Settings, and then Video. So I'm going to set this to 2400 by 1080p. And also confirm that the output scaled resolution is the same as your input, unless you don't have need for the same resolution in the recorded output video. And you can leave frames per second to either 60 or 30, but prefer 60 when available. Next, I'm going to go to File, Settings, Output, and set my encoder to Software 264. You may not need to do this if you have a powerful enough computer, but I found that it helps reduce the CPU requirements when you're recording in OBS Studio. And I also want to set my recording format to MP4. 
Now we've finished setting up our profile. All right, so next let's start looking at how to add sources to OBS Studio. In the software, under the Sources tab, you're going to click the plus sign to add each source individually. For now, let's choose Audio Input Capture. And then we're going to give this source a name to stay organized. And then you're going to select that audio device based on the options available on your computer. In my case, I'm picking my Yeti X microphone. For our next source, we're going to add our webcam. So again, I'm going to hit the plus sign and I'm going to pick Video Capture Device. Again, I'm going to give it a name. And I'm going to select the desired device for my computer. In this case, I'm choosing my C99 Pro Stream webcam. Now we come to adding our PowerPoint source. But you have a couple of options for adding your PowerPoint slides. This is my preferred approach, what's been working best for me so far. Notably, this approach is going to be more difficult if you only have one monitor or you're working on a laptop. Again, you're going to click the plus sign on the Sources tab. So specifically, I'm going to choose Display Capture. Again, I'm going to give this source a name, and then I'm going to pick from the available displays that my computer are connected to. In this case, I'm going to pick my Display 1, which is my primary monitor. At this point, you have the option to choose whether you're going to capture your cursor. This is completely up to you. In my case, I don't capture my cursor, and I rely on choosing the laser pointer in PowerPoint whenever I want to point something out on my slide. Personally, I just think that looks a little bit more professional. However, if that first option isn't working for you, you can also choose Window Capture. However, I've found this approach to not work as well when I'm setting up my PowerPoint presentation capture. Using this approach, you're going to give your source a name again. Then you're going to open up your PowerPoint presentation on your PC. And then in OBS under Window, you're going to pick the option starting with PowerPoint.exe. Basically here, you're selecting the PowerPoint window on your computer, however it's been sized, to be capturing your PowerPoint slides. Next, as before, you can decide whether or not you want to capture your cursor. For more information on OBS Studio's source setup, check out this video. OK, so now you've got your sources added to OBS Studio. Next, we want to arrange our video feeds on the canvas. If, like me, you want to separate your PowerPoint content from your webcam, you're going to move and stretch the respective boxes for those two sources to fit on your canvas. So in my case, I've moved my PowerPoint slides to take up the left side of my OBS canvas and my webcam to take up the bottom right hand corner. If you've decided to overlay your webcam on top of your PowerPoint slides, you can arrange your canvas like this. Next, we want to check our audio mixer and make sure that our microphone settings look good. So here, under the audio mixer tab, take a moment to make sure that all audio inputs other than your target microphone are muted. So in my case, the only thing I want to capture is my Yeti X. Also, if your microphone has different polar pattern options, as I have on my Yeti X, set that polar pattern to cardioid. This is just going to pick up sound from directly in front of the microphone. This is going to help to reduce some of the background noise that could be picked up. The last very important thing to consider is the adjustment of your microphone's gain. You can set your microphone's gain potentially by a dial on the microphone itself, which is the case on my Yeti X, or it might be on some other hardware that you're interfacing, or it could be a digital knob with software associated with your microphone. Once you've found the way to set your gain, the next question is how do you set it? This gets a little bit trickier, and the short answer is to set it as high as possible, but when you're speaking at your loudest moments that you're going to be talking, you want to check that the volume does not go higher than somewhere between negative 10 and negative 6 decibels. Another way of putting this is that you want to set it so that your volume indicator stays almost always in the green or yellow, but never or almost never in the red. If your audio reaches 0 decibels at any point, then you're going to have clipping and distortion of your audio in your final product. And unfortunately, this is something you cannot process out in the editing phase. So it's super important to get this right ahead of time. If you want to learn more about setting up your microphone or adjusting the settings on your microphone, check out this video on setting your microphone gain. Or if you happen to have a Blue Yeti X, I found this video here that was also helpful. Now let's talk a little bit more about our webcam source and what options we can have for our background. It's about this point that you should be deciding what you want your background to look like in your final video product. In my setup, this is my original video source. You can see that I have a pretty simple green cloth hanging behind me that I'm using as a green screen. In your final product, if you want, you can certainly have your entire webcam rectangle appear somewhere on your PowerPoint slides. You might also prefer something like a background blur, or you can insert a virtual background. And this is something you can actually set up in OBS Studio prior to recording. Further, if you've set up a green screen, it's something you can add later in editing when we're using Premiere Pro. 
So I recommend that when you're setting up your webcam, you use the plugin I mentioned to remove the background and give you the most flexibility downstream when you go to edit in Premiere Pro. In my case, this is what the background looks like after I've used the background removal in OBS Studio. I find this option great because you can still add a virtual background later, as I mentioned, but now when you get to Premiere Pro, it can have any shape, size, color, pattern, or even video behind you. Or like I'm gonna do, you can also completely remove the background to minimize the amount of space that your camera footage is taking up on your slides. So now let me show you how to set up the background removal in OBS Studio. The first thing you're gonna do is add a filter to your webcam source. So first you're gonna right click on your added webcam source under your sources tab. Then select filters and under audio video filters, hit plus, and then select background removal. When you do, you'll have a screen pop up that looks something like this. Next, you're gonna adjust your filter, which is basically gonna replace your background with something that can be removed later in Premiere Pro. If you have a green screen set up behind you, it's best practice to try and light that green screen as evenly as possible and try to make that surface as uniformly the same shade of green as possible. In my case, I actually don't have any extra lights set up and I got this to work reasonably well. Next, from this options panel, you're gonna click select color. Now you can pick or select any color you want to be your new background color. For example, we can try to pick a green that closely matches our green screen background. However, sometimes trying to pick this color manually can be difficult. So instead, under select color and then pick screen color and then click somewhere on the green screen background to select the target green color. The goal here is to pick a color as close as possible to your live green screen background. When you're done setting the color, you'll notice that the green curtains have pretty much disappeared as that background was removed and it was replaced with this uniform green color that is as close as possible to the shade of green that you might be able to see right here in the corners of my neck. If you don't have a green screen, don't worry about it too much. Using this background removal filter, I found does a pretty reasonable job of removing the background automatically. So if you're removing the background and you don't have a green screen, again, I would set the color of your screen, but I pick a really bright green color that's very different from anything in your webcam footage that you actually wanna keep. Once you've picked your background color, we can try and adjust the background removal a little bit further. I'd recommend to change the segmentation model to the robust video matting setting. You can also play with the other settings as desired to get the background removal just the way you'd like it. Here in this picture, you can see an example of the settings that I used in my recording. However, I don't recommend you try and match them perfectly, but rather adjust them to your own webcam footage. If you wanna learn more about background removal in OBS Studio, check out this YouTube video. So at this point, we're set up to record in OBS Studio. However, I wanna point you to a couple other options in case you're not interested in paying for Adobe Premiere Pro. Within OBS, you can set up other video and audio filters directly in the OBS sources. And you can do this to get a higher overall quality of recording. For example, in OBS Studio, you can add your virtual background to your webcam footage. Additionally, you can remove background noise in your audio capture. However, personally, I prefer to do all of this downstream in Premiere Pro. This way I can worry about quality adjustments of the sound and video after recording, instead of trying to estimate the right settings ahead of time, only to learn that after I finished recording, I wished I had set them differently. Furthermore, if you save this for Premiere Pro, you can adjust effects very specifically for each individual clip of the video or audio that you wanna focus on. All right, so now we're set up to record in OBS Studio, and your first instinct might be to jump right in and record that hour long talk. However, you should definitely start with a short test recording. I'd recommend a test recording of at least three to five minutes long. This is just to make sure that everything is working as expected before potentially wasting hours recording something that's gonna end up needing to be redone. Conduct your test recording so that afterwards you can check the following. First off, that the full length of your test recording actually made it to your output file. If it didn't, the OBS encoder might have overloaded. In other words, there was too much computation for your PC to handle. And I'll explain how to get around that in a couple of slides. Also, you just wanna check the quality of your audio and video and ensure that your PowerPoint slides and your webcam were recorded separately if that's what you were intending. Also check out the appearance of slide transitions if you happen to record them in OBS Studio and make sure that your cursor movements were captured if you set OBS to be able to capture them and make sure that any of the extra PowerPoint stuff that you added like a laser, drawings, or highlights were also captured properly in the test video. Before we start to record, let me show you how I like to set up all the content on my two monitors while I'm recording. 
First off, my primary monitor is gonna have my full screen PowerPoint presentation in presentation mode. And at the same time, here's what my secondary monitor is gonna look like. I have my webcam sitting on top of my secondary monitor. And right below it, I put a transcript of my presentation script that I can read as close to the camera as possible. Below that, I have my PowerPoint window in presenter view. I'm actually gonna be interacting with PowerPoint from that window throughout my recording. And lastly, at the bottom, I have my window for OBS Studio. And here's where I'm gonna be able to toggle my start recording, stop recording, or pause recording. Let's briefly review how to set up PowerPoint in presentation mode for recording. At this point, your PowerPoint presentation should be open on your computer if it isn't already. Now, assuming you have two or more monitors, which I strongly suggest to make this process easier, we're gonna go through the following steps. This assumes that you've previously set up display capture under sources to capture your primary or your presentation monitor. Next, within PowerPoint, you're gonna to go to your slideshow tab. Here, turn on use presenter view, then click set up slideshow. You want your show type to be presented as speaker full screen, and your slideshow monitor to be your primary monitor or whatever screen you're capturing to be your PowerPoint presentation. Next, you're gonna click from beginning or from current slide, depending on where you wanna start your presentation recording, and your PowerPoint presentation will fill up your primary monitor and it'll put your presenter view on the secondary monitor. Now what I like to do is shrink down the presenter view window so that it's not taking up the whole screen, but my presentation is still taking up my primary monitor. However, if you only have a single monitor available, here are three alternative ways to capture your slides in OBS Studio. And for further viewing, here's another video with instructions for recording PowerPoint in OBS. All right, so how do we do our test recording in OBS? Once everything's set up and looks good on your canvas, in OBS, you're gonna click Start Recording under Controls. Again, take as much time as you'd like, but I recommend a minimum of three to five minutes and try out everything you might do in your final recorded talk. For example, speak in the full range of volumes you're gonna to expect to. Try transitioning through key slides or animations in PowerPoint. Move your cursor around the screen if you opted to capture your cursor. Try out the laser pointer, highlighter, or pen tools in PowerPoint if you want to use any of them. And most importantly, check the bottom left-hand corner of OBS Studio to see if an error message appears, such as error, OBS encoding overloaded. A few key tips for your test recording or recording in general. First off, don't interact with PowerPoint from your primary monitor, but rather use your presenter view window to click from slide to slide, use the laser pointer or other PowerPoint interactions. Also, make sure to use that OBS pause button anytime you need a break or you need to get your thoughts organized before your next line. Next, I'll talk briefly about test recording troubleshooting. During your recording or when you click stop recording and you see the error message at the bottom left-hand corner of the screen that says error OBS encoding overloaded. This basically happens when your OBS settings is asking too much of your PC. For me, I was able to fix this issue in early on testing using the following steps. For one, I scaled down my webcam capture dimensions from a full 1920 by 1080p to 480 by 270p. And I was able to do this because I had no need of a full screen webcam in my final video product. Probably the most important thing I did was go to File, Settings, and Output and change my encoder from Hardware NVEC to Software 264. For me, this seemed to be the key to solving this issue. However, if this doesn't address your problem, check out this link for a more complete list of possible troubleshooting steps to overcome this error. All right, so OBS is set up and we've conducted a successful test recording. And now you're gonna go ahead and make your final recording. Here are some tips for going about your final recording. First off, recording your first slide is always gonna be the hardest, or at least it is for me. In general, try not to get too frustrated in trying to get your video recordings perfect. Honestly, this is something I struggle with all the time. Take your time, pause between sentences. Those pauses can easily be edited out later when you get to Premiere Pro. You might find it useful to take two or more takes of each slide or each sentence if you want multiple options once you get to editing. Also, unless absolutely necessary, try not to speak during slide transitions or in the middle of animations, if you have them. You might find later that this makes editing more challenging. Another trick, try not to move your head around too much in between takes. After you edit your footage together, it might make your webcam footage edits look a little bit clumsier. Also, while you're recording, be mindful of any pop-up notifications that might show up on your primary monitor on top of your PowerPoint presentation. Usually there's a way to edit this out in Premiere Pro, but it's just an extra hassle that is useful to avoid. And lastly, try to record your presentation during the day, or in other words, when there's good uniform lighting in your recording space. 
Otherwise, when you transition from one slide to the next and one was darker and then the next brighter, this can dramatically change the lighting on your face, making your webcam footage less consistent from scene to scene. Thanks for joining me for part three of producing educational lecture videos using PowerPoint, OBS Studio, and Adobe Premiere Pro. Part four of this series will cover editing and exporting using Adobe Premiere Pro. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to follow my future content. Bye.